everyone. Welcome back to another video here talking about Microsoft Power Automate. For today, we're going to take a look at using conditions in our flow, something that's quite popular for us to use every single day. But have you ever had a condition that adds in an additional step to your flow? And part of that condition, when you work through the flow itself, if it's false, does nothing, right? You just want to check a status, check a value every single time, do something if it's true, but if, if it's false, do nothing. The problem that we can get sometimes with that type of flow and that type of condition is that we are always going to have some type of action within that flow. It's always going to create that API call for us that will be charged against our tenant, against our license inside of Power Automate. Wouldn't it be nice if we could set up a flow that will still do that same conditional check to make sure something has changed, some status has been enabled, some type of value is true. But if it's not true, don't do anything. Don't even start the process of the flow itself. Don't even go through the motions there. So what we're gonna take a look at today is how we can use trigger conditions inside of Power Automate to help us in that step. So what I'm gonna do is take a look at a flow that I have built here. What you can see is that for this flow, all we're simply doing is checking if an item's created on a SharePoint list, and then inside of a conditional step there, I'm just checking the, the priority value. If the priority is high, then go ahead and send out an email with some detailed information from that item is created. If the priority is not high, if it's low, if it's a moderate, intermediate, middle, whatever it might be, do nothing. Now this flow works exactly as designed. It's quite simple, but it works exactly what we wanted to do, that it, it will only go ahead and send that email if I have that high priority. So let's take a look at that running real quick, and then we'll talk about how to make this work even more efficiently from there. So all I'm gonna do here is do a quick little test of this flow to show you the output that we're getting. I'll just use from a recently used trigger real quick. We're gonna hit test, and once this flow runs, what we're gonna get is this email. Okay, it's, it's passed through my condition. You can see that I've gone, the expression is true. I've passed in an item here from my list and I'm getting this email, okay? All the dynamic content I'm getting here. There's my work item description, all those other pieces that are coming directly from a SharePoint list that looks like this. So you can see the one that I've added in here, the newest one is just like that, okay? That's what I've added in. You'll notice that we do have a, high priority for this specific task. Now, the flow works great, it works fantastic each time, but what if we passed in a new um, task here, a new project, project that wasn't a high priority? What would happen is we would have this flow run the same way, and I'll go ahead and do a new test here. We would have the flow run, but we'll get no output in the end. We'll go down this if no condition um, because we're not gonna pass that test within our condition. So I'll go in here and add in a new item here. Our work item would be maybe to plan the holiday party. Okay, uh, upcoming events. We'll just put a quick description there. All right, the category, I could just add something in here. Planning, that works fine. Uh, let's see, progress not started yet, priority, let's make this a medium priority. Start date here for this one, let's say that let's get started on this on Monday and make sure it's done by sometime in next month, right? We'll call it the ninth. And I'm gonna assign this to Austin and we'll be good there, right? We're running the flow, it's now been added. Here goes the flow, I'm expecting it to run. There it is running successfully. We have our condition, that's yielded false. So the flow is running each and every time. We have one different uh, API call there, potentially furthers if we have other steps within the flow to do our check, but it's not doing anything in the end. It works great, but not the most efficient way to do things. In fact, a better way for us to design this flow would be to place that conditional step, not here as an action in our flow, but inside of the trigger itself. So that conditional piece will be always added in every, so every time an item is created, it will be checked over inside of the trigger. If it is false, the trigger will not even initiate from the beginning. It's the best way for us to make sure our flow is working most efficiently and we're doing the best we can against our API calls here within Power Automate. 
So let's take a look at how we can add that trigger condition into this flow to make it work much better and more efficiently while still getting the exact same results in the end. So all I need to do here for this flow itself is hit edit. And I'm just gonna add in one step here that I'll use to develop the trigger condition. And the action that I will use here within this flow is simply put a filter array. Now I'm only using this filter array to design the condition. We're actually not gonna keep this in the end, but this is the really great step here to enable us to just design how we wanna use that condition inside of our trigger. So here's our filter array. And what we're gonna focus on is not the from section, but we are gonna focus on right here where we can design our conditional logic. So this can be designed the exact same way we have it in the, the condition control action here, where I can come in here and check my priority value is equal to high. Oops, make sure I spell high correctly. And now the trick here, the benefit of using the filter array is I can select right here where it says to edit in advanced mode. By choosing edit in advanced mode, I can now see how this condition is written with Power Automate in order to copy and paste into our trigger. So all I need to do is copy and then come here inside of the trigger itself by selecting our options and choosing our settings. Once I select settings in here, this is where we can add in our trigger condition. So right at the bottom of our settings within the, the trigger itself, you can see we have our trigger condition right here. Select add and simply put, let's paste. That's all we need to do. Now we have given ourselves the exact same conditional option here, but placed it inside of the trigger instead of as an action or a step here within the flow. If I had multiple conditions, maybe I want to add in for the priorities equal to medium or for to low or whatever I wanted to check as well, I can simply do the same thing here in my condition or I can just create that same step here and then add it in here as well, right? We're providing those extra options right there. All I'm gonna do is select done. My conditional logic and my trigger has been completed. Now what I can do is remove my filter array because we don't need this anymore we can remove this send an email action out of our condition because we still want to do the exact same step and then we can just remove the condition. I don't need it anymore because all of that is being placed inside of my trigger. Now all I have are two different steps here to work with and if I save and test this, we're gonna go and make sure that this is working the exact same way. We're getting the exact same output but just making it much more simpler for us to use and even more efficient. So come here, we're gonna do a test. I'll do one of my uh, original tests here for the one that is a high priority and then we'll test one that isn't high priority to make sure we get both outcomes. So we'll look at this one here, hit test. And we're gonna go ahead and run that. Okay, that's gonna be for, it should be for this provision new environment in Power Apps. Here's our send an email. Okay, we could see that there's our step. It's done successfully there. I've gotten a new email here that looks like this. There's my new high priority email that has just come in right there. It's run successfully. I've gotten that. Now, what we're gonna do is let's do another test from our other trigger. So the one that we did that we've added in manually here, I believe that's the correct one. Let's do a test with that and see what happens. Well, it's not gonna read anything because nothing gets passed through. So let's actually do a, a manual test just to make sure things are still going here. I'm gonna do manual test and it's gonna get a result that just keeps spinning, right? We won't get that warning that nothing can happen. We'll just get a spinning result here. So let's add in another new task here, a work item, a very low priority item there. We'll do our category, it can be design, just do something quick here. Let's say it's uh, in progress, priority will be low. We'll have our start date, it's not gonna matter because this is not gonna run anyway. We'll do it today. We'll have it be completed for tomorrow. I'm gonna to assign it to Allison, and we're gonna go ahead and hit save. Let's make sure that we are testing there. We're gonna hit save. And what you'll notice here in our flow is nothing's gonna happen. 
we're not going to get any type of run because we've added in that trigger condition. It's still waiting for something to occur. It's still trying to get something to happen in order to run the flow. So all I need to do here is if I added in another test for high priority, right? We can kind of skip all these, just make sure we're having that high priority as our check. I believe we need our start date in here as well. I'll put something quick in here for our due date assigned to, I'll make this to Matt. And then if I hit save, what we're now gonna see is here comes back our flow and we should see the flow running from here. We should be able to get that email. In fact, I've gotten the email already. You can see that it's finally triggered here and there it is. There's our next email that's been thrown in there. I missed the, the, the description in this time, but we have all of that set up for us ready to go. So in the end, using a trigger condition is the best way for us to add in conditional logic inside of our flow because it allows us to save money, to save time, to save those API calls. So the flow will not ever be triggered unless that condition rings true. So it's a really great thing to have in your back pocket, just in case you know inside of your, your conditional action that there's nothing gonna be occurring if it doesn't pass through true. You can set this up and save yourself some time and money. It's a perfect solution for us moving forward. Well, thanks for joining me here today as we look through another use case within Power Automate. This one, trigger conditions and how we can help, us, uh, help ourselves get even more efficient working with the system. I look forward to seeing you in our next one. Stay tuned. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button below to get everything coming back directly to you. And we'll see you in our next video coming up soon.